Yeah, I was unloading some coal, and I thought I'd, I got various ones here. I thought I'd show you. I had to get it unloaded before the ground thaws, and I can't get in here. This is lignite. As you can see, it's like layers laid down because all lignite is is peat that's been compressed for you know heat and pressure turns it into lignite. Now we've got a lot of that in the state, but it almost looks like layers of mud, which it kind of is. Um, not a real good quality coal, but we've got a lot of it in North Dakota. The whole western end of the state is full of lignite. So you can get it cheap. I know my brother uses it uh, to heat his house. He's got a hot water boiler outside and he uses a combination of lignite and wood to heat it and then the house is heated with the old cast iron radiator. So he once in a while has a semi bring in a load or splits a load with somebody else. But it sells for like $25 a ton out west. It's, it's the transport that kills you. Uh, they do use it in power plants. I think there's one out west that uses it. But y you have to have the power plant close to where you're mining but, the lignite because it's the transport that's the killer. But it burns, but it's a soft coal. You just see the layers of sediment there. Back off. But it would work like in my uh, cook stove. I've got a couple other stoves that lignite burns fine in them. But it's a dirty, uh, smelly coal to burn. But it's cheap. And I would love to have a vein of lignite. This is a sub-bituminous coal. This stuff comes out of Wyoming. Um, they use it for like steam engines and stuff. That's a lot harder. Then I see train loads of that going by all the time. You know, they're hauling it from Wyoming up to power plants up in this area in, in Minnesota. But this stuff was actually, uh, they use it as for the steam engines. You know, it's a steam coal. Big chunks. Yeah, but that's got a smell too, you know, if you've ever been to one of those, uh, you know, like this, they actually burn this stuff at Rolog, at the steam thresher reunion there. <laughs> you can see from miles away, you see that cloud of smoke. You know, it's not a real clean burning coal. But they, they go through a lot of it, a heck of a lot better than the lignite. But this is a sub-bituminous. This is the bituminous coal. This came from Missouri. This is a little better. is isn't got so many impurities in it. You know, because bituminous part of it means, you know, like tar. So, you know, you've got some smell to it. But this is what they use for a lot of blacksmithing. And I've actually had, uh, one time I had a whole pickup load of this stuff because the guy, he used it to heat the uh, greenhouse. He was a big time grower and he had a heating setup that burnt this coal. Well, the water was rising, he was going to get flooded out. The river went up, so he was selling that coal off cheap. So I got a whole pickup load of it one time. And I used it, it works for heating too. It's a, still a relatively soft coal. But that's what most of the people use for the blacksmithing stuff. You know, and it's, it's not that uncommon. Like I say, this came out of Missouri. But then this is anthracite. This came out of eastern Pennsylvania. And you can see uh, it's a lot, a lot shinier. It doesn't have all that tar in it. It's a lot cleaner burning. Burns a lot hotter. First time I ever had anything to do with this, we were but when I was a kid, we were going to go deer hunting. And we came up here. There's a shack over in the pasture. 
about two miles away from here. The, the shack had always been there, and there was a coal stove in there. And so we were going to stay overnight up there the night before deer season, so we'd be right on the ball, you know. And there was an old stove in there, and there was a pile of this and anthracite over in the corner. So we threw some in there. You know, got a fire going with wood, threw some of this in. Well, it didn't take off. Threw a little more in. Pretty soon she took off. We damn near burnt that shack down. You know, it uh, it got completely out of hand. That stove was glowing red. Uh, you could have poked your finger through it. You know, it was just uh, on the verge of meltdown. Stovepipe was red all the way to the roof and there was flames flying. A couple of cousins were up on the roof pissing on the stove, on the stovepipe, trying to get the, because it was, it had got so hot that it was catching the roof on fire, melting the tar roofing paper, you know. Who we were throwing snow on, if it wouldn't have meant for that snow, uh, we'd have burnt that shack down. But this stuff can get out of hand, it can get really hot. But I thought this, you know, if you really need the heat, I'd try some of this. You know, this stuff was all available. Well, lignite hardly pays to ship lignite. But like this, the bituminous that is commonly used, you can buy that all over the internet. You know, uh, ends up being eh, roughly a buck a pound to have it shipped in. Same with the anthracite. You know, eh, about a buck a pound. There's a lot of people dealing in it because it, there again, it isn't the cost of the coal, it's the transport. Well, with these, now where you can do, uh, you know, 25 pounds in a box for a flat rate, you know, so you can buy this stuff. But I was going to experiment with this. I haven't, haven't used this before. This stuff I've had before. You know, I've played around with this uh, blacksmithing stuff. It seems to be a kind of a big hobby now people are getting into, which is why anvils and forges cost a fortune now. It used to be they'd give that stuff away. But uh, I've had equipment for years. I used to monkey around making gate latches and hinges and that sort of thing. You know, I, I don't get carried away with it. I just make the stuff that I need. You got to use a little caution in this stuff because, like I said, there's a lot of people getting into it as a hobby now. And this used to be one of them things that you you apprenticed under somebody else for a long time. It's not something that you watch a couple of videos, read a couple of books, and you pick this up. You know, you can get a basic idea and you can monkey around like the level that I do. I just monkey around with this stuff just to do what I need to do. But it's something to get really good at, you got to really devote a lot of time to. And you always learn. You're always learning. This is something you're never, ah, you can say, I'm an expert. You're never going to be an expert. But you can do enough to get by. So, you know, use a, a little caution when you're listening to people tell you how to do this or how to do that. Like I say, you, you're always learning. If you're smart, you know what you don't know, and accept that. But I'll go into it sometime. I've got some work I need to do, which is why I, I want to... Eh, this, I think, is, is going to be interesting. This is a clean, hot-burning coal. Just got a controller. You're not using it in the stove. 